Welcome to your community. This is your hometown. This is Walton Entertainment. This is where you can hear from the community and those making a difference. We explore topics, local festivals, arts and entertainment, and local news. For this program and much more, visit us online at yourlocalstream.com. That's yourlocalstream.com. Here's a look at the 2020 sample ballot. Good morning, thank you for watching. I'm Dina Huff, the Executive Director for the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. And I have a couple of guests with me this morning, and this is the entire staff of the Partnership and Walton Youth Project. So I would like to begin by giving you my information this morning. Um, I wanna let everybody know that our collaboratives our collaborative meetings are back in full swing. We are meeting here at the Board of Ed Annex building, and that's 1820 Georgia Highway 11 North in Monroe, down Highway 11 by the Dollar General. And we have those meetings at 8 a.m. the third Tuesday of every month. We also offer the Zoom option. So if you're interested in joining one of those collaborative meetings, we're, they're open to anyone um, in the county. If you have something to share about families and children, you're welcome to join us. Um, but you can email me or call me to get more information on that. Also, I wanna remind everyone, if you are a business organization, church, um, have a service to offer for Walton County, I would, like for you to go online uh, we do have a walton county resource directory now and um, i would love to have everyone's information so i have to approve everyone but if you could just go to www.resource.directory and um, i will send you you that will send me an email and then i will approve you as a business organization whatever you may be and then you will submit your information in the resource directory so let me begin by introducing you to rick baker our family support coordinator and he has some information to share well good morning uh, in addition to working with dana here at the partnership i'm also currently the chair for the Walton County Domestic Violence Task Force. And we are currently doing a donation drive to support Project Renewal, which is the domestic violence shelter that serves Walton County. We have bins placed at different locations around the county. One is at Felker Recreation Center. Another is at Meridian, Fel uh, Meridian Re Recreation Center. Uh, we have one at Loganville City Hall uh, we have one at Social Circle City Hall, and you can also bring donations here to our office, and we have a donation bin at the Praise Center on Highway 78. We're asking for personal hygiene items, personal care items, shampoo, soap, lotion, those type things, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, hand soap. So anything to do with personal care, personal hygiene, we're asking that you donate those items at those locations. If you'll check out uh, our Facebook page, which is Walton County Domestic Violence Task Force, uh, the flyer is listed there along with the donations and the items needed. Uh, we certainly appreciate your help. Uh, unfortunately, during this time, uh, this, the time of this pandemic, uh, cases of domestic violence have increased and so the need has increased as well. So thank you. 
And now back to Dana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my next guest is Miss Tish Fan. She is the director for the Walton Teen Advocacy Board here in Walton County and she has some wonderful things to share. Hi, good morning. Um, the Teen Advocacy Board is a group of 20 teenagers from throughout Walton County and we interview and, and bring them onto our board to develop grassroots initiatives to affect change in their community. We um, are currently working on an outreach for some positive mental health posters and you'll see a couple of those behind you. These were created by local middle school students in a summer camp that we hosted and it was so successful, everyone enjoyed it so much that now we're offering that to the public. If um, you go to our website, which is waltonadvocates.org, there are instructions on how to either sponsor a sign or buy one. They're $20.20, and you can use software to design them. People can draw them. You can give us some ideas, and we'll design it for you. But our goal really is to just see these positive posters everywhere throughout Walton County, and that was um, the initiative the kids wanted to bring to you. Okay. So, I uh, appreciate both of y'all joining Thank me. You. Do you have anything else you want to share this morning? Not at this moment. Well, I will share that uh, here at the partnership, I provide uh, family and individual counseling. And I am currently seeing clients in the office. Uh, so, if you are interested in counseling, uh, call me, 770-207-3176. If I can serve you, I'll be happy to do so. If not, I'll be happy to provide a referral to another therapist. So that's a service we're offering at this time. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you both for thank joining you. me this morning. And if you have any um, information to share or questions for us here at the partnership, you feel free to call me at 770-207-3175. Thank you for joining us. Hello, my name is Joel Burnsid and I'm the Ag and Natural Resource Agent for the Walton County Extension Office located here in Monroe, Georgia. Today I want to talk to you about some of the services that we offer uh, the public and citizens of Walton County. One of our most popular services um, are soil tests. Uh, these are very important um, and anyone can come in and uh, grab a soil test bag. Uh, you can take soil tests if you're wanting to, to know the soil nutritional value of your garden, of your lawn or landscape plants. Um, these can be very helpful in helping people um, decide what type of fertilizer, how much fertilizer, pH of the soil, and etc. Uh, and these are only seven dollars through our office. Um, so I really uh, suggest that people come in and do soil tests on your lawn and gardens. One of our other services uh, that we do offer is water testing. I know a lot of people um, don't think about testing your water, but if you live in Walton County and you live and your water source is a well, we highly suggest uh, that you test your water at least once annually. Um, we have several different types of tests depending on what you're looking for, but some of our most popular is our basic water test. Um, the analysis tells you the water hardness, the pH of the water, and several different mineral and metal levels in your water. Another important test that we offer is bacteria and E. coli. Um, from the name, uh, this test um, checks your water for any harmful bacteria or E. coli that can be harmful to your health. Uh, and these are available through our office. We also have a new water test um, that's available is uh, testing for radon in your well water. If you don't know what radon is, radon is a uh, invisible and odorless gas uh, that seeps up from underground. Uh, and it just so happens that Walton County is in a high range area in Georgia where radon can be found in homes. Uh, you can test radon in your air and in your water and we offer both of those tests through our office. Uh, we suggest that if you have a basement, uh, that uh, you test your basement for radon in the air, and then if you are on a uh, well, and that's your water source, we also suggest uh, testing for radon in, in your water. Why should you test for radon? Uh, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer um, behind tobacco uh, in the world 
and also uh, if ingested uh, through water it can cause stomach cancer. Um, if you uh, do receive a, a test uh, with radon in the air or in your water, these can be easily fixed uh, to, to mitigate uh, the amount of radon that comes into your home through air or water, and we can help uh, advise you on that. Um, so we have several different tests and services um, for you. Uh, if you want more information, you can stop by our office in downtown Monroe, 100 North Broad Street, or you can give us a phone call uh, at 770-267-1324. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jody Johnson and I'm here with the Recreation Report. Uh, we're glad to say our fall sports are going great. Uh, we've had uh, no issues whatsoever and uh, parents are really doing a good job and uh, you know, staying home when they're not feeling well and coming to the, to the parks and really keeping separate. So our baseball and softball seasons, we're about halfway through. We'll take uh, and our football. Uh, cheerleading, soccer, and our cross-country teams are all doing very, very well. We're about, uh, we're even close to halfway through with the season uh, now that it's uh, the first of October, and uh, uh, so looking forward to, uh, to to finishing strong through the month of October, uh, and then uh, by November first we will be into basketball season, which we are registering for right now as we speak. We are going to extend uh, registration. Um, you know we. Uh, we had to put some limits on the spectators because that's really where our issue uh, was was at. That um, you know the number of people that can come in and out of our gyms, we didn't want to cause too many people being too close together. Uh, we are going to uh, rethink that, and we've done some some uh, some math on how many spectators we can put six foot apart in our gyms. So uh, we are going to be extending our registration period. Uh, which was going to end this Friday on October 2nd. We're going to extend it to October 9th. October 9th will end our winter registration. And instead of limiting one, we are going to limit to two adults. And we're going to allow the siblings to come in and sit with those parents. So uh, we are going to um, uh, improve the, the we, we had some parents that were just, you know, couldn't bring their child to the games. They're a single parent. Uh, and they had other siblings or some other issues. We think we can do that safely by uh, creating different entrances and exits and removing everybody from the gym before the next group comes in. So we think we can put more people in the gym that way and still do it in a safe manner where the kids get to play their basketball, parents get to watch, the, uh, and they have somewhere for their, their other kids to go. So we're extending registration to October 9th and we still have some limitations on spectators, but we think we've uh, relaxed it enough that uh, most people can accommodate and play. We will require masks when you're in any of the common areas, and if you can't be six feet apart. Uh, and again, all these restrictions will be in place until the, either the end of the season or uh, that uh, you know, the CDC decides that uh, no, those restrictions are no longer needed. Um, but we think that's uh, uh, yeah, using best practices for uh, our, our programs is the best way to go. So basketball registration until October 9th. It is limited space, so go ahead and get registered now. Um, again, we have a lot of uh, construction going on here at the uh, Recreation Department, uh, thanks to, mostly to the uh, SPLOST uh, that uh, was passed a couple years ago. We appreciate that, and uh, with that money, we're trying to be good stewards, and we are uh, in the process of finishing up the, uh, the splash park in between. Uh, we also will have a dog park and some pickleball courts uh, alongside of that as well. If you, uh, you go by the DMV and the fire department, it's right across the street. You can see construction that is going on. It's starting to take somewhat of shape of the way the park's going to look. Um, the splash pad is, is going down now and the, uh, the concession building is uh, erected and uh, they're in the finishing touches of that. And then we'll go in with some landscaping and they should be done by the end of October. So looking forward to, uh, to, to having that as one of our newest parks. Uh, we broke ground on the South Walton Community Center, uh, which is gonna be a great uh, gymnasium and uh, fitness center for the folks in the uh, social circle in South Walton area. So we look forward to uh, over the next six to seven months, uh, seeing that uh, go up and uh, uh, be a part of our um, park system as well. Uh, so a lot of good things going on with the rec department. We've got the basketball and all the fall sports programs that are going. The weather's uh, October is generally the best month in Walton County where it's a little drier, 
the uh, temperatures come down so it's a great time to get out to your parks and, uh, and and see those we have lots of outdoor walking trails our pavilions are now open for rentals uh, so if you want to have some type of gathering birthday party or uh, just any type of gathering just uh, go to our website at waltoncountyga.gov uh, and then you can look there for all the amenities that we have find a park near you It's usually the easiest way to uh, see all of the inventory of parks that we have uh, in Walton County Which there is a lot of, of really nice ones out there uh, with pavilions playgrounds ball fields uh, We have an assortment of all kinds of things here in Walton County. So um, With that being said that's uh, that will conclude this show and uh, we hope to see you at either one of our parks at our ball fields or at our community center and remember, sportsmanship starts at home. Thank you very much. Creative artists can offer you a wide range of video production. Call the experts and discuss your project today, whether it's your special event or your company. Creative Artist, 770-267-7368. Creative Artist produces this program you're watching. Call Creative Artist today, 770 770- 267-7368. Creative artist. They'll put you in the spotlight. Hi, welcome to Monroe Walton Center for the Arts. A couple of things to let you know about. On um, Saturday, October 10th, you probably already know, uh, the Monroe Fall Fest is being held that day. And our part of adding to the festivities is uh, we will have a um, pottery workshop uh, making a really super cute little monster uh, planner just perfect for um, Halloween and great for things like succulents and air plants and things of that nature super cute really fun project for all ages kids can do this too they'll need the parents help alongside them but it's a fun project for adults or kids both and that will be going on on the hour starting at noon so we'll have a class at noon one two three and four o'clock and it's first come first served it's drop in we only have a limited number of seats so we can provide some distancing but come for that of course come downtown for all the fun things that are going on downtown on that Saturday October 10th so that we'll have the pottery workshop I believe we'll also have a, a special kids workshop I'm not sure of the details of that yet uh, we'll have a pottery sale uh, lots of uh, pottery our pottery students will have um, lots of things for sale adult students so you'll be able to pick up some bowls maybe some plates and mugs things of that nature on that day and um, some also some other pop-up shops from our other artists of course our gallery will be open so please come in and see our fabulous show it closes October 22nd so you only have a couple more weeks to see the show um, we have 64 artists um, over 130 pieces in the show a lot of them are available for purchase a lot of them have already sold so uh, they do have to stay on display through the end of the show so you're not missing anything but do come in and see the show um, on Saturday the 10th or any time um, we are open Tuesday Wednesday and Thursdays from uh, 11 to 4 Fridays and Saturdays from 10 to 5 we're closed Sundays and Mondays so do please come in and see the show. The other thing that will be going on that day is, of course, our shop will be open. We have over 50 artists in our shop. Lots of really cute Halloween items available for sale. Jewelry, little tea light. Um, I should have grabbed one. Little tea light um, covers that look like ghosts and monsters that are made by our awesome potter, um, Linda Russell. So lots of cute things um, that are great for the fall or for Halloween available in our shop as well. You can also, of course, always pick up a class list. When you're here, this is just a really quick one-page overview. If you go to our website, 
MonroeWaltonArts.org. You'll see all of the um, details, how to register, um, if there's a fee, how much it is, and a picture of the project or the painting that we're doing. Other things going on in October, of course, we have our sip and paint coming up on the um, third Friday night. And it's a kind of a uh, really pretty pumpkin fall scene. And that's our sip and paint with Donna. That's third Friday night from seven to nine. The other special event we have going on in October is another pottery project that's on October 24th, a Saturday. She has two sl time slots. So she has a one o'clock and a three o'clock time slot. Uh, limited seating and this one you do have to pre-register for it is not a drop-in like our soirees used to be so this one you have to pay ahead of time and register um, and the project is making um, it's a hand-built vase form it could be used as a um, utensil holder in the kitchen I'm using mine for a utensil holder um, it's just beautiful, and you can see a picture of that on our Facebook page at Monroe Walton Arts or on our website at MonroeWaltonArts.org. So do come in and pick up a class list, see what all we have going on, visit the shop, visit the gallery, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Hello, Walton County. This is Kevin Little with the Chairman's Report on uh, Walton Entertainment. Today I'm going to uh, start talking to you a little bit about some of the things that uh, me as Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and the previous boards have accomplished over the past 20 years. It's October 1st and uh, this is my last three months as Chairman of the Board for Walton County. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little about the early years and what may have uh, taken place during that time period. One of the main goals when, when I got elected were to bring the cities and the county together as one and uh, we were able to do that early in 2001. We came together and took over the city of Monroe, city of Loganville, and city of Social Circles city parks and their recreation departments and took it under a county force and we put it as part of a splash tax and so we've uh, <coughs> we all agreed on that and we worked very hard to promote that and make it happen and the vote for the election was September the 18th of 2001 as many of you know September 11th 2001 was one of the saddest days in this country but we were still able to pass that splice back then and we were able to take the bring the parks and recreation we, we felt like that that was one of the if we showed each area to have the same uh, playing facilities as they grew up that that would help and soothe some of the uh, disagreements between the cities within the county. We also a part of this splice was the 166,000 square foot government building out off of Hammond Drive that we still use today. That, uh, that building was uh, three football fields basically stacked on top of each other. So that's just give you a perspective of how it is. We built that for a little over $15 million, and the architects and engineers told us then if we had bid it six months later, it would have been $30 million. So it was a uh, great deal we got there, and we also did the uh, jail addition, that the 300-bed addition to the jail down at uh, on South Madison at the current sheriff's complex. It was uh, as part of that spliced also. So uh, we uh, accomplished a lot there in the very early years, and so we. Uh, trying to uh, get up and going after September 11th we we were able to uh, the economy the country everything kind of draw to a halt for a while but Walton County continued to press on and we uh, <clears throat> went on through those years and got that those buildings and got everything up and going and then we voted on another splice very few years after that and we uh, built the uh, community centers on that one the, the gymnasium at Felker Park and the double gymnasium in Loganville we, was part of that splice we uh, also built the uh, Georgia State Patrol post we were able to get convinced the colonel uh, of State Patrol to bring State Patrol post here from over in Conyers and so we built them a facility and at the time <clears throat> in which they still are today Georgia State Patrol and driver's license are separate we built the driver's license facility in between uh, and it's still striving very well today also and uh, 
We did expand and build our new animal control facility down there as well as the 911 center. So uh, uh, your one penny has done a lot here in Walton County over the last few years and uh, we continue to uh, produce projects that were uh, part of the 1% sales tax. This will carry me through about the first six or eight years of, of my, my being chairman. I'm gonna update you more on the next next series, but this is just some of the buildings and some of the things that, that you probably travel in and out of uh, frequently here in Walton County and you didn't realize that they were paid for one penny at a time and that the cities and the county all work together to make this happen as we continue to work today to make these happen. But uh, I'm gonna, uh, over the next few months, I'm gonna update you on different and various just, activities and things that have gone on in the past 20 years just to uh, refresh your memory of some of the good things that we've had here as chairman of Walton County. If you have any questions or concerns please give me a call 770-267-1316. Thank you. Hello I'm Kenny Sargent with Keep Walton Beautiful the Walton County Recycling Center. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, we're, we're staying super busy down here at the center. Um, we're thankful for that. Uh, as, as the weather starts to cool off, we just want to remind people we've already uh, had, had quite a number of people come in already bringing in leaves and they're, they're cutting back some of their uh, shrubs and things like that and we're having to turn them around um, and I know I get pretty repetitive in saying this but uh, we really do want to save you a trip all the way down here uh, and you know, not have to turn you around and remind you that things like leaves and limbs uh, and, and grass clippings and all of that need to go to an inert landfill. They will not be accepted here. Uh, we have several uh, inside the county. We have some right here in the, in the Monroe area. Uh, there's others out closer to Loganville if, if that happens to be uh, the area you're in. Uh, We'd be happy to, to give you those numbers and direct you to the nearest one to you. Just give us a call down here, 770-267-1421. Uh, We'd be happy to, to help you out with any of that. Uh, going forward, we do have a, a paint collection event that's been scheduled uh, for America Recycles Day. Uh, that is gonna be Saturday, November 14th. Uh, we plan to do that from eight to 12. Uh, there are still some details to work out and going forward I'll, I'll keep you updated on, on those details, some of the things like the, the cost of the paint uh, and, and all of that going forward. Uh, it's not a free drop off, there, there is a small fee that's associated with us collecting the paint. Um, we collect just enough paint for us to cover our cost because we are charged for that. So uh, that is the reason for any charge we have. It, it's not anything we make any money on. We just want to pay our bill uh, that we get charged to collect the paint. So again, that will be Saturday, November 14th. Uh, we'll be doing that from eight to 12 and uh, we'll, we'll get more of the specifics out as we go forward. Um, and like I always do, uh, if you've never been out here to our center, uh, come out and see us. We're out on, on 2051 uh, Leroy Anderson Road uh, off Highway 11 South uh, near Meadows Funeral Home. If you turn on Leroy Anderson, come all the way to the end of the road. We're on the right at the end of the road in the cul-de-sac. Uh, come out and see us. Let us help you get started recycling. Uh, let us show you some of the things we take here for disposal. Uh, and, you know, if, if you don't want to come out, you can always give us a call. Again, our number is 770-267-1421. We'd be happy to answer any questions or, or concerns you have uh, as it relates to recycling or solid waste here in Walton County. Uh, but come out and see us. We'd be happy to, to show you what we do, try to help you get started uh, recycling if you don't. We'll try to help you get started re recycling new things if you are an avid recycler. Uh, but Come out and see us and give us a call if you need anything. Until next time, take care. Hey, thanks a lot for tuning in today. As always, we're gonna show you some of the dogs and cats that are available for adoption here at the Walton County Animal Shelter. 
Uh, before we do, you know, we've had a lot of changes over the last several months. The pandemic's kind of kept us sequestered and we haven't been on the camera too much, so we just want to introduce some of those changes, some new faces and some new positions. Uh, so you may have read it in the newspaper, but back in April we did reorganize uh, and restructure the department. I have gone from being the director down to assistant direct director with primary duties over the shelter, still doing all the uh, adoption rescue websites, the photography and things like that. Um, but in some exciting news, we've uh, got a new director who's primarily over the law enforcement and the road aspects of it. You've probably seen him on the camera before over the years. It's uh, Sean Morris. He's taken over as director. Uh, and then after his uh, moving up to director, that left his supervisor position open. And so in addition to Sherry Gray, uh, who's been a longtime supervisor here with Animal Control, we now have Andrew Stoops has moved up uh, from an officer to a supervisor position. Uh, he's still on the road, but also handling some supervisory duties, uh, animal cruelty complaints, dispatching, and things like that. Uh, and then we've also hired a new officer. This is uh, Officer Lumpkin. Uh, he's been working with the county for quite a while over in the Parks and Rec Department, uh, but made the transfer over to our department. So we've got a whole new team, a great team that's working together to make sure that all the animals that come into the shelter are getting adopted and rescued, and to make sure that all those animals out there on the streets are still being cared for uh, and just serving our community. Uh, so you can feel free to you know, check in on our website. The contact information on each employee is there, uh, but take the time to welcome uh, Director Morris or congratulate him. He's been here for a while. Same with uh, our other officers here as well. And so just some great changes we wanted to make you aware about. And now we'll show you some of the dogs and cats that are available for adoption here at the shelter. Here we have a little female. She's probably one or two years old. She's a really sweet girl. She's a little nervous. It takes a little bit of time for her to get used to you. Um, she's looking for a good home. Jay. He's about four months old. He's we think he's a shepherd lab mix and he's pretty playful, very sweet, and available for adoption today. <laughs> this is Echo. She is a three month old shepherd mix. She was found at Dollar General on Highway 11 and she is ready for adoption today. She's up to date on all of her shots and dewormer and everything. And she is playful and very sweet. The Peach Mountain Gang, the way we got together, it's really, I think, a story of, of bluegrass, bluegrass community. Uh, we never planned to be in a band. I never planned to sing or play more than one instrument. Um, and Andrea, my daughter-in-law, and I started playing together, and she could sing, and we sang a little bit together, and we were playing on the square. And another band uh, heard us ask us to sing along with them, to play with them at a, at a gig. It was at a retirement home. And we had a lot of fun. Next thing we knew, that band was asking us to um, play a set at a, at a uh, benefit for a museum. And we didn't have enough people to play a set, but I had been to the SEBA, the Southeastern Bluegrass Association uh, meeting, and met Libby, and invited her to a jam class that Andrew and I were attending. And at that same jam class, we met Jeffrey. So we quickly called Jeffrey and Libby and said, hey, would y'all like to play with us at, a, at this gig? No pressure. And they said yes, and I don't think they knew what they were getting into, but uh, as, a, as a result, the Peach Mountain Gang was born, and we've had a lot of fun.
a sense of, of joy and purpose and even on my darkest days. Um, it, it gives me happiness in my heart. It, it, you get a sense of community and you get your, your bluegrass family and I love performing and playing out. I never knew I would like it this much, but it makes you feel good. There's gravity in the log and ain't got my dog and I will I get in my nose. I'll get me a brown and I'll twist in his hair and that way I'll get in my You can't listen to the banjo and, and not smile, at least I can't. You know, you, you hear it on the Beverly Hillbillies. You hear uh, Steve Martin, before he went full-time playing, he, you know, he'd play with it when he was doing his bits. And wow, that's, that's just a wonderful sounding instrument. But my stepfather bought me one, bless his heart. He got it from a pawn shop, I believe. And uh, I tried to play it off and on for about 18 years. And what I didn't know then is that uh, the neck was warped. And what that means is once you start fretting up past the third fret or so, uh, it won't be in tune because you, it just there's no way the string's not in the right proportion. But I'd learned some rolls and stuff, and I would I would try to put away for a couple of years. But on my birthday in 2011, I went to Banjo.com when it's still here in Atlanta, and tried something out. And lo, lo and behold, those little rolls that I was doing actually sounded good. So I bought one right there on the spot, and that's, I haven't I don't know that I've gone a day without playing it since. Really, I take it every.
Ritter was doing trauma all over. Well, um, I've been playing at the guitar since I was a kid, but uh, you know, would put it down, pick it up. I never really had uh, other people. Uh, didn't didn't seek out other people to to play with, and it wasn't. Uh, but I'd already always. Uh, uh, it had always been a, you know, a dream to be able to play uh, bluegrass guitar uh, in a band since I was uh, in high school, really. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of years ago that uh, when I met these guys, I just, you know, decided to, to uh, spend time. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's just been great. The bluegrass community, camaraderie, the family we've been talking about. Uh, it's uh, just, uh, like I said, for a string therapy, it's good for foot algae. It's just it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's just uh, changed, uh, changed my life in a lot of ways. And uh, I'm really uh, just so grateful to be playing with these guys and, and uh, all the, the people that we jam with. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Let's read I'm Big Enough. It's by Amber Stewart and Lane Marlowe. Let's read. Bean was big enough. She was big enough to hop all the way around Stickleback Pond without stopping. She was big enough to go dandelion picking and to choose the juiciest ones for Mommy to cook. Bean was even big enough to swing the highest of all her friends so high, her giggles could be heard over and beyond Bluebell Wood. So high, her tummy tumbled as she flew up. She was big enough to do all these things. But was Bean big enough to stop taking her blanket just about everywhere she went? No, said Bean, I love my blankie. 
Maybe you could try doing things without your blanket, said Mommy and Daddy gently. Yes, blankets are for babies, said Bean's big brother. No, they're not, said Bean. So Bean made a plan just in case her family decided to take her blanket away. She called it the Keep Blanky Forever Plan. Early in the morning, Bean set out to hide her blanket in a special secret place. It wasn't on the edge of Stickleback Pond because the frogs might find it. It wasn't between the branches of Thunderstruck Tree because the birds might take it. It wasn't buried in the soft earth because the mice might want it. Bean was just wondering if she would ever find the right spot when she saw a hollow log hidden by overgrown bushes. Bean hid her blanket deep in the hollow log and hurried home. She was happy all day knowing that the blanket was safe. But when bedtime drew near, Bean wanted her blanket. She had never had a bedtime without cuddling her blanket. And she didn't want one now. So Bean set out to her secret hiding place to bring her blanket back home. The woods looked different in the early evening light. All the hollow logs seemed the same, and now Bean wasn't sure which one was her hiding place. Was her blanket in that hollow log? Or that one? Or that one? Oh no, cried Bean. My plan didn't work. I've lost Blanky. Poor Bean had no choice but to return home blanketless. And close to tears, she saw Mommy. Bean, where did you go? Mommy asked. To look for Blanky, sniffed Bean. But I couldn't find it. Bean's family was very kind about the lost blanket disaster. Daddy read her two extra bedtime stories and Mommy made her hot milk to help her sleep. And Bean's brother lent her his second favorite teddy bear. Bean didn't like her first bedtime without her blanket. She didn't much like her second or third either. But soon, looking for her blanket turned into looking for ladybugs and four-leaf clovers and making the very best hideouts and going hollow log sledding until Bean had forgotten all about her blanket. One windy spring day, a long time later, Bean and her friends were chasing dandelion seeds in the sunny part of the woods when she saw the strangest thing. Bean looked at the tiny baby fox and knew now that her mommy was right. She really was much too big for her blanket. The end. How would you like to read Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by 
Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carl drew the pictures. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. The end. You see the plane and, and you don't quite get the sense of what it's like when you see it static. But when you see it fly and you actually, you know, can uh, get in the aircraft and, and sense that there's, you know, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not like a modern 747 or something like that where it's a sealed aircraft. It's completely open. It's, you know, nothing between you and the outside except a thin layer of aluminum. So we just, you know, want people to realize that, the, you know, these guys went through pre pretty horrible conditions. You know, people shooting at them, flat going off. Uh, freezing temperatures. I mean, at, at altitudes of you know 25, 30,000 feet, it could be anywhere from negative 30 to negative 60 degrees. So all they had is you know just electrically heated suits to keep them warm. And you know if those went out, it was uh, pretty pretty uh, miserable conditions. First off, my name is Ray Fowler. I'm the Liberty Foundation Chief Pilot. Thank you. This is a great turnout. This is the first stop of, uh, of our 2013 season with the Memphis Bell, and I see some familiar faces that flew with us last time we're out here, which is great.
general feel at Panama City, and uh, I instructed the B-24, but the B-24 was in such demand because it would haul more bombs and was a little faster, etc. So we used B-17s to train the students. And uh, so that's, that's how I flew on the B-17. Well, of course, the first invasion I made was Sicily with the British. That was exciting. We got hit there pretty good. The next one was D-Day, and the next one was southern France. And then 30 days later, we went into Holland.